I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the Restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really happy today to introduce Jenna Murphy. Thank you Hi. for coming and sharing your story with Thank us. Thank you for the time. And so, should be very interesting. <laughs> and uh, so, as we usually do, find out about your background a little bit. Where were you born? Um, I was born here in Utah, okay. uh, raised in Kaysville, Utah, okay. all of my life. Went to school there. Went everything. to school there from you know, all the way through high school, yeah. so, yeah. And born into a Mormon family, were you? Yes, Mormon family from both sides, yeah. any, long history. Any pioneer heritage in there Oh, somewhere? absolutely, my uh, my maiden name is Eccles. Oh, Eccles my. are well-known oh, pioneers, yes, so. They are. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, so you just grew up in kind of a normal home and had a good family, I guess, or? Um, yeah, or, yeah, uh, a great family. Yeah. I'm the youngest of four siblings. Okay. We. The little um, baby of the family. Yeah, baby so. of the family. Were you spoiled? My brothers and sister would say yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and did, did they all go to church? And, and, uh, we did. We grew up going to church. Yeah. Um, my parents were not married in the temple, but we, it was just what we did. We always went to church growing up. Um, being the youngest, by the time I came around and started going to church about, I don't know, elementary school age. My parents didn't go as regularly, so mm -hmm. I didn't either. Oh. But I did go, yeah. and especially as you come into junior high, yeah. you go because that's where all your friends are. So yeah, I was no. very active in Young Women's and okay. Mutual. I assume you got baptized then, of course. Was baptized that? at eight, yes. Yeah. How was that? Just, did you remember much about baptism? But I, um, I always think it's kind of interesting. I always felt like... It, as a Latter-day Saint, that uh, eight, eight was okay to get you on the records of the church, but you know, turning your life to Christ and accepting Him and eight's a little young, I thought. But I agree, I and I was—I uh, remember it being not necessarily my choice, just kind of what was coming up next. It's, expected, it's just what you do. What you it's do what it. you're expected. Um, again, at that time, we weren't super regular in our attendance, so. Mm -hmm. It felt a little awkward to me, um, but but I did it and was, you know, happy to be doing it because then it meant I was part of the group. <laughs> sure. And uh, and what was told to me at baptism really stuck with me. Um, you're baptized. You're washed clean. Yeah. You're you're forgiven, <laughs> but from this day forward, you are responsible to not sin, yeah, basically. Keep the commandments, keep the and, commandments then, yeah. and, and basically just do it all right from this day forward. And that really stuck with me because I can remember as a young girl, when I realized I'd done something wrong, really worrying about, oh, I, how, do I get how do I get rid of this? I was here, I was all clean and perfect, and now I'm not. And yeah, you some know, people want to keep getting rebaptized. Right. So I was washing. worried about that genuinely. Yeah. So uh, that sort of started to be a burden after a while, oh, like, interesting. you know, your black marks start talking up. For your young mind. Yeah. yeah. For <laughs> and then you had another experience early on in young women's. Um, 
about uh, 13 or so. Tell us about yes, that. Yes, I was with, I was in a class with um, all my girlfriends and um, they were teaching that day about the pre-existence and how, you know, some, uh, like you say, fence sitter, fence sitters, some fence sitters weren't truly noble and so when they were born on earth their skin was darker and there was a yeah. young girl in our class a friend of ours a dear friend still is a dear friend who happened to not be there that day but she has beautiful black hair and olive skin and so there was a comment about her perhaps not being oh. one of the better in the pre-existence oh. and the only thing i remember thinking at the time was okay well I'm pretty white, <laughs> but I don't feel like I'm being as good as I'm supposed to be here. Like yeah. again, that kind of sin, yeah. guilt kept creeping That's into my life. Isn't it? The guilt yeah. that we feel when you're sinning, you're climbing the ladder and then you fall back down. The yeah, ladder I definitely process. never felt like I was measuring yeah. up yeah. ever. And you get invited to a camp though. Yes, and in my family, again, I was the youngest, and my uh, three older siblings, all in their own experiences. Uh, Jesus got a hold of them as they went away to college, became born again believers. Really? Yes. All no, had they, they hadn't been active in the church, or had they? Well, no, they had. They and had. what was it that brought them out? Maybe we'll get a chance to interview them. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, all different stories. Um, yeah. yeah, all different Just stories. Different stories. But and um, my oldest sister, uh, we have a big age gap, but. Um, so she was an adult, and she invited me to a young, a Christian camp up in the mountains um, that was put on by the church that she was attending at the time. Mm -hmm. So I went. And how was that? And uh, it was very unusual for my little Mormon experience. It was a Pentecostal church that put it on. So to me, they all seemed very strange. <laughs> <laughs> and yet they kept sharing the story of how Jesus paid the price for my sins, all of them. You hadn't really heard that before. I, I hadn't really heard that yeah. before because it so stuck with me that I was now responsible for every sin. Sure. That when I realized that Jesus said, no, I've paid them. I've paid them all. It is finished. I, and when they own? offered the offer, the altar call, I, I definitely answered it. Really? I knew I wanted freedom. And you're just, what, 13 or 13 14? years old, yeah. Wow, that's... Looking back on it, are you surprised you were so mature spiritually? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't call it mature spiritually, well, but yes, very surprised I mean, that I responded. sensitive to what's going on. Absolutely, because I wanted so much to be a part of who I grew up with. I, want, I was a rule follower. Yeah. So to really step outside of that and say, no, I, I don't think this is working. Like, I need to be a place where there is freedom. Mm -hmm. That was a big, that was outside of my comfort zone. So for you sure. got that message that Jesus had paid for our sins. Mm -hmm. And so now you knew how to get rid of those. Or not that they even existed, right? Yeah, that they, that yeah. they were paid for. Um, but of course, I went home as a 13 year old, and all my siblings had moved out of the house by then. Um, and I didn't know where else to go, so I continued going to the LDS church oh. um, until high school. About high school, I kind of dropped out of it. Now, were you noticing anything in the Mormon church? Or was that just felt the same or different, or did you per perceive it differently now? Um, good question. I think I just felt like I needed to continue going to be among my friends. But if anyone asked me, I would have said, I really don't think I'm Mormon anymore. Really? Um, well, it wasn't just kind of understood that you still believed the church was true? Or? Yeah, I don't, I didn't believe the church was true. Oh my goodness. But, but I was going because that's where my friends were. Oh, more cultural. Yeah. Kind of social yeah. stuff. Huh? Very social. Yeah. Yeah. So you get through high school and what happens? So I get through high school and I meet a young man at college that he was a return missionary, okay. LDS missionary. Had that been a goal of yours? To go on a mission? No, no, no to marry a return missionary? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. I just met one that I liked. Okay. <laughs> um, but he was very active in return missionary and asked me shortly after we started 
going out if I would marry him in the temple. Oh. And I said no. But he continued to pursue me. And in the meantime, he kind of was coming to his own um, faith issues and really wondering what he believed about Mormonism. About the doctrine or something? Yeah, yes. Okay. He was very... He, was, he began to study very much about the um, Book of Mormon and Mormonism and what and its history and what he believed. And so he kind of fell away from Mormonism, and okay. that's the period in which we got married. We were both a little bit of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> kind of wandered for a while. We and, did wander, for know. sure. Um, but that's when we got married. We were married by a Mormon bishop, again, because we knew no, nothing different. Sure. Um, by the time we had our first son and he was two years old, we did know we wanted God in our children's lives. Okay. So we went back to the Mormon church, because that's what we <laughs> what knew. What you knew. <laughs> and we attended a little bit and just, we never heard Jesus. We never really? heard him preached or... You were aware of that. Very aware. See, when I, when I was going, I guess I just always felt like he was there. I mean, it was just kind of mm -hmm. understood. We said the blessing on the sacrament. We mentioned his name. We closed all the talks in his name. Right. But now, of course, going to Christian churches, you just realize what worship is and, and how they mm -hmm. worship Jesus and talk about him and, and the Bible and so on. But I, you just sense that when yeah. you went back. And we just your husband did too. And yeah, we were both in the same searching and yeah. didn't hear him there hear about him other than yeah. at the end of a prayer. Right. Um, so we decided to start attending other Christian churches and we didn't have any great spiritual reasoning for why, where we went other than it had to start late enough that we could still sleep in. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime we ran into a longtime friend of my husband's and he asked him about where he went to church and he said really you should look into Bible study fellowship and because you'll you'll really learn about the Word of God there okay. so my husband started going and within I think a month of going he prayed to receive Christ wow. and I went about a month after that and the moment I opened the book we were studying Matthew at the time it's like I remembered suddenly, oh, this is what, what I heard when I was 13. At that camp. Jesus paid it all. And it was just awakened in me again. Really? And um, so God was gracious in that that all happened at the same time. Wow. And we went to the same church our friend who had invited us to BSF went to. And that's where we were baptized together as believers and really grew in the Word of God, um, really immersed ourselves in it for years. So, wow. And I know you were telling me that you actually decided at some point to go back and read the Book of Mormon. Yes. What, what happened there? Um, after years of Bible study fellowship and just being, you know, grounded in a Bible-believing church, yeah. I decided I should read it. Um, I never read it as a young girl. So I picked it up and it was so difficult to read and I just kept thinking Jesus said my sheep know my voice and I didn't hear his voice mm -hmm. at all in the reading and so it was actually kind of difficult to finish <laughs> reading <laughs> but because I had become so grounded in God's Word it was so clear and I was grateful that I hadn't read it as a young girl because yeah. I think I would have really been confused yeah. it, it sounds it sounds so good and religious. Well, you kind of are talking about what I call the good news of the message that we try to mm -hmm. cover in this, uh, in, a, in, a, in this show, and that is the, the good news of Jesus and who he is and mm -hmm. what he did for us and the, the grace that he's offered. Were you aware of any of the negative parts or what I call the bad news of Mormonism? Even going through, I mean, were you aware of the different... The, the problems with the Book of Mormon and the Book of Abraham? And um, yeah, I did I did start hearing about that. Um, but that really wasn't what motivated you? Not at all. It? Not at all. And yeah. in fact, that's... I'm glad that that's my story, that it 
it wasn't, it didn't have anything to do with what was wrong over here. Okay. It had everything to do with Jesus. That's so neat. I heard Jesus. Yeah. And because I would have, I would have been a great Mormon. <laughs> I would have followed all the rules <laughs> and tried really hard until I heard at that little camp that I went to. The message, the, the real Jesus message is. of grace. Yeah. Of grace and, and see, hope I didn't even know that. Even coming out, I didn't know I had this good news to look forward to. Mm. I didn't understand that. I knew there was a problem over here, doctrinally, historically, the polygamy and all that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. But that's what kind of pushed me out. But I didn't know I had this other good news to look forward to. And yet Mormons would consider themselves Christian. Yeah. What do you think yeah. the, what are they misunderstanding there? That's a tough question <laughs> because I know... Um, obviously, many, f most of my family, um, yeah. extended family, are uh, Mormon. Paul's family is Mormon. Um, friends that I love dearly, and I always just think I have to wait for the right season when the <laughs> Holy Spirit reveals that to me and be ready with an answer. When... In the meantime, love them right where they are because that's what Jesus did for me. Yeah. He loved me right where I was, a confused girl, striving to be good, knowing I was failing. Yeah. And he knew that that's what I needed to hear, that he paid it. So yeah. the news came at the right time in the right season. Yeah. I know you've evaluated this now over the years, but mm -hmm. grace and works, what, uh, what do we read about that in the Bible? <laughs> that, uh, you know, God has planned good works for us after we receive his grace um yeah. he will, expects us to do good works, right. of course but and it's, it's after we're and saved. it's just in joy of what he's done for us yeah. that we do those but it's not for salvation because i can't i that that's what i learned within mormonism is i can't yeah. be good enough yeah. that just was over and over came back to me i'm just not i'm not cutting it so interesting that I found the freedom and that in that freedom we can love God through loving others has just been And don't you, do you blessing. sense a sense, a, a, do you sense a, a, a feeling of pride and, and in, in Mormonism, judging, judge, being judgmental? You're mentioning the situation in the mutual class when they're talking about the pre-existence. I mean, we just naturally judge others in Mormonism, right? That was my sense anyway. Right. Um, and I guess in the neighborhood that I was in years ago, a few years ago, many Mormon neighbors that, again, we loved and we did many things with them. Yeah. And they were good and loving, kind neighbors to us. I have nothing but good things to say about them. And that kind of rose up in me, that worry that I'm not measuring up. Why would they ever hear anything from me because I'm not measuring up to their standards of what good Christians should look like. So I just would pray, God, I pray that they see me, no, that they see you in my yeah, brokenness. In what you're doing. Yeah. That they can see some hope that you can be broken and loved. Yeah. You can be broken and that's where God meets you rather than performing yeah. to be met by God. But Mormons are good at putting on a facade, aren't they? Sure. I mean, it, we would go to church with our cute little family and our, mm -hmm. all our cute dresses and ties yeah. and everything. We dress our little kids, eight-year or nine-year-olds up mm -hmm. in suits and stuff and put on a good face. But in reality, they've got problems. I mean, right. They, they have guilt and they have issues that they're dealing with, but they don't want to ever admit that because... And that's been refreshing as a Christian to be able to say, I am a sinner. I, exactly. I don't measure up, but Jesus paid all that for me. Exactly. Yeah. So that, that was always my hope. I don't, you know, just that vulnerability um, is where God meets you. Yeah. So. You're mentioning the Bible. Have you been able to share that at all with your friends or family, people li willing to listen to? Because that's one thing about, again, as Mormon, the, more, as a Mormon, I just didn't trust the Bible. Right. And even coming out, again, I didn't know that was something I was going to look forward to, to be able to get into His Word. I thought, how can you study that all the time? Mm -hmm. You know, the only one book. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, mm -hmm. I guess I, I can think of a few instances where I um, shared where some biblical truth didn't line up. Um, but really, the stories, the testimonies, within the culture of Mormonism, testimonies is where people feel and hear the Spirit. So when I share my testimony of how Jesus is in my life, I feel like that comes across. They relate to that. They relate to that. They hear that more. And then if they start to ask more questions, able we to. can dig into the Bible. But yeah. um, before that, I just feel like their language is a language of testimony. Yeah. When you went to a, uh, did you ever uh, come, I mean, obviously you came across the mm -hmm. cross now, the mm -hmm. cross of Jesus. Uh, did you have any, was that a shock to you the first time you saw the cross or in a church? <laughs> um, no, uh, I guess, I guess I just was a little bit more open to it. So when I heard the story of the cross, it just, resonated with me and I didn't understand why it wasn't part of the story growing up Mormon. Oh. Um, because I remember obviously the story of Easter um, in the Mormon context is really just about his resurrection and I don't remember ever hearing about the cross. Yeah. So when I did then it just made me curious as to why it was never addressed in my Mormon upbringing. Yeah. Yeah, you know, they can't kind of have him suffering in the Garden of Eden, right. Garden of Gethsemane. Right, course. the and, suffering was there, so yeah. so it felt like there was a big part of the story that I was like, wow, I I missed that. <laughs> yeah, well, so has this been a joyful journey for you and your husband? It's wonderful that you've been able to do it together. Yes, it has been wonderful. And, and your siblings, your older siblings, I guess they're thrilled that you. Yes, it, yeah. a joy that they're um, that we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, we have that in common for sure. That's yeah. been a blessing. And any regrets or any, I mean, anything you'd have done differently as you shared or made your journey? Um, I think my regret would be that I kind of took a stance of anti-Mormon for a while in the beginning, mm. which isn't good because they're not my enemy. <laughs> They're In what people sense? I love. What sense was that? Just, um, just like feeling like I had to attack or or worry about making sure. Kind of shake sure, them up or yeah. make them think or something. Yeah, else. and that's not my job. <laughs> my job is to love them where they're at because it's the Holy Spirit that will move them, not me. So, yeah. so that's definitely softened. Like I wish I hadn't taken the attack. In the beginning, I wish I had just. I think that's natural, though. I think we oh, did yes. the same thing. <laughs> yes, everybody. I think generally people come out feeling very betrayed. Yeah. And I don't know that I felt betrayed. Other than, I don't know. Maybe I did feel betrayed. Yeah. Maybe that's why I was angry. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> we step angry. back and we kind of look at a big picture. We all, all of a sudden, realize that we've been duped, <laughs> or that we've been told things that really aren't true, and then. And then you also had the blessing of, of knowing Jesus more yeah. than I did at that time. But I think we do sense that or have that feeling of we've been betrayed or we've been conned or whatever Absolutely. you want to say. It. And our, our eyes are open. And then when you, like you said with BSF, the Bible study, that you just start reading things in the Bible that, are, um, that aren't taught in Mormonism. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, I guess you're right. There is a... A sense of betrayal, a sense of, you know, I've I've been taught this was it, this is my only choice, and. Uh, well, that's what we grew up with. That's, right, but that's, then when you're born you know. there and you don't know any different, and you so. kept going back, <laughs> trying to, I <laughs> trying no, to make this it is work. all I know. This right. is this has got to be right. And you know, growing up in Utah, that was. Oh sure. Yeah. If we if we had been else elsewhere out of state, maybe we would have had. I other wonder options. how that would be, wouldn't it, if if we didn't have quite the culture that we have. Now. Yeah, the culture is very very strong here, and it yeah. was certainly for us even after becoming Christians, kind of that some of those cultural things yeah. stuck with us. Now you mentioned one child. How many did you have? We have three. Have three. Yeah. And are they? Do they go attend church with you? Or? Um, they yeah, we raised them, and okay. so for them, they were raised just, Christian within the yeah. Mormon culture. 
which is a different story for them. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a joyful journey, and we're getting close to the end, actually. So do you have something you'd like to say to friends and family? Um, just love, love your neighbors. Like we, our experience in our uh, neighborhood that we just moved from was years of deep friendship. We did have open, honest conversations about Teacher, God and Jesus. To do that. Yes, Good yes. Um, and yet they were always so kind to us and would invite us over after their temple evenings. We would go over to their house and still have dinner with them. So they were very open and we did have a lot of really good conversations. Did they, were they trying to bring you back or trying um, to? I'm sure that was part of it, but it was a genuine friendship. These mm. are our genuine good friends. So oh, that's wonderful. Um, it, we, we were able to keep a dialogue open, which was yeah. really healthy. And you really don't know when you're planting seeds or Right. That maybe something will bloom, blossom later. Right. Someone else will come into their life and share something. And, and we've had some really wonderful uh, experiences with missionaries at our home. We always welcome them in with open arms because... What do you talk to them about? Um, we tell them our stories. We tell them that we, we really are interested is. in them. We ask them, tell us why you're out here. Let us know why you're here, because you feel strongly about this. Yeah. And uh, we've sat down with them before and said, let's, let's agree that we're both seeking truth. And because we want to know truth. I'm curious, do they ever say, and I'm not putting words in your mouth mm -hmm. or theirs, but do they talk about the church, Joseph Smith, the Book of Mormon? Do they talk about Jesus? What do they say when you say, why are you out here? Um... So we asked this, maybe this was an interesting story I should have brought up earlier. We had a yeah, cause we're sister, about a left. <laughs> okay, Sorry. we had missionaries visit our house for, frankly, like a, a year and a half, maybe two years, wow. consistently. And in all that time, we studied the Bible with them. Oh my. And we just agreed, let's, let's study what we agree on. Yeah. So for, so with 13, LDS missionaries coming through our house during that time. Oh Every week we met to study the Bible. Oh, you really planted seeds there. So, yes, and we're still dear friends with Are many you? of them. Are you really? So, um, but did you sense, uh, the others, I keep saying, do you sense? Did, did you, were they talking about the church and Joseph and yes. the Book of Mormon and that not was, about Jesus? Yeah, or? that was the first lesson, and, yeah. and they had, it was interesting, they had a little thing. I guess uh, we're out of time. Maybe. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. We should have brought that up earlier. I know, we should have. Jenna, thanks so much for sharing, coming and, and sharing your story. And, yeah. and uh, appreciate you, you coming. And we'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.